All right, so we're going to start a new chapter today, chapter five, which is over Southeast Asia. So we're moving kind of south of China and a little bit to the east. That's why we call it Southeast Asia. Uh, and it's going to be made up of um, several countries. So uh, some of them are interesting in their naming because it's changed a little bit. Um, so we have Myanmar, or Myanmar, uh, which used to be known as Burma. Um, I always remember this because you may know the python called a Burmese python. So the people of Burma would have been known as Burmese. So that's where the country of Myanmar comes from. We have Laos, Thailand, which might be one of the most familiar to you. Um, we have Vietnam, important country because we fought a war against them. Cambodia, and then the two major groups of islands down here, really kind of three groups of islands. We have Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Philippines. And so this forms um, kind of the more Southeast Asian region that we're going to talk about. Uh, we will talk about stuff that is further south and east of this, but that's going to be Australia. Um, so there's the mainland section, uh, and then there are the islands, or this term insular uh, is an area consisting of islands. So we've already talked about archipelagos, but insular is another term uh, to kind of mean islands. And it's really made up of these 11 uh, countries in this region. Um, this is just kind of a little bit more about what we'll find. Um, one of the, the big things, um, so it talks about the Malay archipelago here, which is made up of 24,000 islands. So Malaysia and Indonesia and the Philippines, uh, just, you can actually, if we go back a couple slides and you take a look, like if you look at the Philippines there, just look how many different islands you're seeing. And if we could actually zoom in on that much more, there'd be a lot more there. Uh, zoomed out like this, you know, we can't see that. So there is a ton of islands in this region of uh, the world. Maybe that's a little bit, I don't think that's really a whole lot better. Um, some of the islands maybe you've heard of before, there's an island down here uh, called Borneo, uh, which is a pretty important island. And there's another one called Sumatra. Uh, and Sumatra and Borneo are the only two islands where you find orangutans. Um, and so I don't know if that'll come up here in this first section, I think it does, um, but we call species that only exist in one place in the world endemic. Um, and that's, a, that's an important part about Southeast Asia is that there's a lot of endemic species that live there. Um, so there are mountains, you can see that in the picture here. Uh, some mountain ranges on the mainland. Um, there, there is volcanic activity as well. So the ring of fire goes through this region. Uh, we might even watch a uh, volcanic eruption in class one day. Uh, you can see kind of this is where, um, so we've got the mainland up here. This is kind of where we see um, these are all those little red triangles are different volcanoes that exist. So there's a lot, like it's not just a couple uh, that exist in this region. Uh, one of the important events in history is uh, the eruption of Krakatoa. Uh, kind of a funny name, I know, but in 1883, it erupted uh, and it collapsed into the sea. Uh, it caused a tsunami and it killed 36,000 people, which is pretty devastating for the time. That's one of the kind of the um, earlier, um, earlier modern references, I guess, to an earthquake eruption in this region of the world. And there's, there's been some that have even been later. Uh, an even deadlier one hit uh, Indonesia in 2004. Um, 200,000 deaths in that one. Now, you might wonder why it's so much more. I mean, well, population has increased a whole lot since the 1800s. Uh, so that's part of the reason why. Plus, it was a more devastating one. So this picture right here shows that devastation where there's just pretty much everything is leveled um, from that, um, from the earthquake and then the tsunami that followed. Um, this video kind of deals with that. Um, you can kind of see that devastation. I'm going to skip past this, but you could always access this video uh, through the notes that I always upload. Uh, this just shows kind of what they're famous for uh, and known for commercially as far as mining and growing crops. Um, so there's various things like lead and zinc and gold that come out of this area, multiple different kinds of woods that come um, from like the rainforest areas. Um, some of these can go into making furniture um, I'm a guitar player, and I can tell you that ebony is often used to make the fretboard on a guitar. Um, so I think my acoustic guitar actually has an ebony fretboard on it. So it's a uh, particular type of wood that's used in guitar uh, making, but 
it would be used for other things as well. It gets the name ebony because it has a black color to it. Um, but deforestation is obviously any place that has rainforest can be kind of a risk. Uh, and they've been dealing with that here as well in Southeast Asia. Um, another term that you're going to want to know is this word commodity. Uh, and commodity is nothing more than just a product or material that is bought and sold. So, you know, here in Indiana, corn is a commodity. Soybeans are a commodity, but other places in the world produce other things. There's some pretty large oil reserves in Indonesia and Malaysia. Um, and, you know, and also even these um, types of wood that we just mentioned would be uh, commodities. Um, this kind of just talks about the oceans that are in that area. Obviously, a lot of islands have access to the ocean. Um, here, um, we're going to talk about the Strait of Malacca and just how it was kind of a center of trade. That will come up even in other chapters, so, uh, or in other sections of this chapter. Uh, Singapore controls this strait today, and it's one of the most important ports in the world. Um, it's even kind of referenced in the like Pirates of the Caribbean movies. He talks about being in Singapore um, because pirates would need access to port, I guess, you know, to ports. Um, so access to the water is something that exists in a lot of these uh, Southeast Asian countries just because so many of them are islands or, you know, on this peninsula here, um, they have access to the ocean as well. Um, some major rivers, one of the big ones that will come up is the Mekong River. Uh, I think there's a slide here. Yeah, so it's the longest river in Southeast Asia and actually flows, you know, close to 3,000 miles through multiple countries. Um, it was kind of important also in the Vietnam War, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, this shows uh, what kind of climates exist there, and you can see that it's kind of mainly this pinkish color and pink, so those are the first top two. It's mainly tropical climate there, so lots of rain, um, lots of hot, humid uh, temperatures that exist. There it says hot and humid um, temperatures that kind of exist. You know, Vietnam and the war, a lot of soldiers kind of came away with talking about just how their socks were always wet, you know, like they were always walking through wet fields. Um, so very, very hot and humid in this region, which makes it really good for growing things like rice. Uh, one of the slides through here deals with how rice is a major uh, food staple. Um, one of the other things that's kind of interesting here is that because it's close to the equator, there really isn't uh, four seasons like we have here. There's really like a, a dry season and a wet season. And in the wet season, there are these monsoons that come in that bring in um, this rainfall uh, that exists here. And it says these winds bring cooler weather to most of the mainland, but heavy rains to the islands. So it brings those cooler temperatures. So that would kind of dictate whenever they're, um, you know, um, able to farm in this region. There's just kind of a list. Um, you can see, like I said, tropical and subtropical climates exist in most of those places. Um, they have typhoons. Um, uh, they are hurricanes. Just when typhoons, uh, they get that name because they're in the Pacific Ocean. So if uh, if it's in the Atlantic Ocean, uh, we call them hurricanes. That's why you typically hear about like Florida or Texas um, getting hit by um, hurricanes. They're, those are occurring in the Atlantic, but the Pacific, we call them typhoons. So really rapid air uh, air movement. Winds are blowing at like 150 miles an hour. They have this eye going on here, and then the, you know it's moving like in a circular pattern to create a really devastating storm. Uh, so one of the natural disasters they have to worry about there. Um, skip past that. So this is the slide that kind of talks about a little bit this word endemic. Uh, so you can see the orangutans up there and it is orangutan, not orangutan. We sometimes pronounce that incorrectly, um, but they live on the island of Borneo and Sumatra. Uh, we've got uh, some tigers down here. Uh, so there are a lot of species in this region anytime you're in rainforest uh, that really only exist in that one area. So um, that really about does it. I mean, kind of big thing themes here. Climate's hot and humid. Um, you got some ma major waterways like the Mekong River, uh, and then access to the ocean through the various seas. Species are endemic. Um, it's in the Ring of Fire, uh, you know, and that creates a lot of volcanic activity. Um, so that will kind of really wrap it up for uh, an introduction to the physical geography of Southeast Asia.